ask you the first question around compassionate fatigue syndrome. And that is for any of our viewers, listeners out there that have never heard of this before, what exactly is it? Compassionate fatigue syndrome, or what I like to call employer fatigue syndrome, is a condition of, um, I'm going to say, a post-traumatic or a result of post-traumatic PTSD. And it typically happens when you are in a position where you care for someone. It was um, until recently most um, associated with healthcare workers or military soldiers or first responders, therapists. Most of the time hospice workers where they would be helping somebody um, through the final journey of their life. You know, we can, we typically can, uh, you know, go through one of these events and um, cope with the, the experience of it. However, when you do it over and over and over, that's when it starts affecting you. And then you actually become um, what we say, uh, compassionate fatigue syndrome starts happening. The stress of it starts happening. So you just said something really interesting because when I read up about it, you know, um, it was when it came to the workplace, it was, they were relating it very much to HR professionals, mm -hmm. but and it employee compassionate, I mean, employee compassionate fatigue. So right. Could anybody in the workplace um, have it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially in the current uh, situation of COVID-19, there are uh, general managers, uh, CFOs, um, presidents of companies whose main goal is to not only save the business, but to um, address all of the team members who report to them. Uh, they, they can all suffer for, from, um, what again, employer fatigue or compassionate fatigue syndrome. You know, one of the most difficult things to do in the HR profession is to do a layoff, perform a layoff, because those individuals did nothing to deserve losing their job. Sure. And when you are in charge of a business and that business uh, is suffering, where most of our businesses uh, have uh, today, then um, the impact to your employees, that really is a trauma for us. And when you're doing it one, you know, one after another, after another, um, that's when employer fatigue comes in. And I've heard it, I've spoken to several GMs, um, heads of department, and I hear it in their voices and they've expressed it in many times as it being soul destroying. Perform a, like say, a separation of employment for one person. You have compassion there. You're, you're, you're feeling and showing sympathy for that person. When you are laying multiple people off and they're losing their um, employment, that's when empathy comes in. And the, the difference is that in empathy, you are actually putting yourself in their place. You, you know what they're going through. It, it's difficult. Your heart breaks for them. And it's difficult to pull yourself out of that, um, that fatigue, what we call employer fatigue. Um, compassion, it's, it's a sympathy. Empathy, you're actually putting yourself in their shoes. You get it. You relate to them. And Judith, how would somebody know that they are actually suffering from this condition? What are some of the symptoms? There's a lot of uh, emotional changes that happen with um, compassionate fatigue. You can be irritable. You can be forgetful. It's almost the same signs of anxiety. You can be anxious, um, poor concentration. What, can, what kind of steps can they take to alleviate it? Again, I think one of the first things um, is awareness of what compassionate fatigue is. If you're aware you are able to cope and you're able to help yourself. Um, if you're finding it difficult to empathize, empathize with someone or show compassion, then you know, we typically know that we're, something's wrong with us, we're, we're off. Um, so knowing your own self's emotions, um, your feelings is, is key. You know, who's that person, that go-to person that you go and you speak to? 
if you feel you know somebody that is really affected by this condition, what should you be doing? What would you suggest um, a colleague or a friend should do? If you are in the HR field, I would suggest that you a- approach the individual. Hey, you don't seem to be yourself. What's going on? Can, can I be a resource for you? Um, let me help you. If you are a, um, maybe a member of management and you don't have the experience on approaching individuals, then I would contact your HR uh, team for that. So thank you so much for that, Judith. Um, It's been really great chatting to you.